Howdy, we're here at Lake Parsons, somewhere in Brandon, Florida. Been going out on the Spoonbill boat. And this is a video I've wanted to do for a long time, the unboxing ceremony for a brand new GIT 304L, the tripod that I use every single day. And I should mention the Spoonbill boat. Froggy is a little taller than me, Captain Shadel, and he goes with the 404 XL, and he uses it in salt water 100 days a year a thousand times better than his old Gitzo tripods, the ones that weigh twice as much. Anyway, we got a brand new one, a GIT 304L, and a rush delivery for a friend from uh, Chris Klapik at Outdoor Photo Gear. So here we go. Uh, we're gonna also show you some basic tips aside from what you get in the box, what you wanna do with it. So here is the whole mirror. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it over here as a repository. And you don't need the plastic bag. So I undo that. Everything original goes back in the box. So if you ever sell this thing, if you live long enough, you have everything. You should do the same with all your cameras and your lenses. Everything that comes in the box, out of the box, goes in the box. As far as this fancy carrying case, People show up on IPTs with them. I shake my head. I never use the case. There is a good toolkit in here that you want to grab. This is the video head. I never use that. But this toolkit has some valuable stuff. Unfortunately, this big wrench, which goes to tighten the legs, you need to dig up a second one of these because you need to do to tighten the legs when they get loose. So you'll find a place for that that works. I have a little toolkit in my fanny pack. That stays out. This goes into the box somewhere, somehow. There we go, come on. And then they give you this pretty little almost paper sack we don't need that. We take it out. And first thing I do with every single tripod that I've ever owned, notice no center post. This thing is a pain. If you're seriously doing slow shutter speed photography and you need to hang a 500 pound weight from here, you can leave this in. Sometimes you need to use pliers to get this out. I tested this one before. It came out with just finger pressure. And the reason for that is you want to be able to get down completely flat and hold that tripod sometimes on your shoulder. You don't want this thing digging into you. This goes in the box. If I had time, I'd put it back in the kit. And the next thing is an important step that most people don't know or overlook, and if they know it, they don't do it right anyway. The first thing I do is take out each leg three inches. Just like that, just like that. Ideally, it'll be exactly the same length. The reason you do that is when you're working, you don't want sand and grit getting into this lower, uh, or whatever they call these things, the grip, the tightener, the fastener. So that's step one. Next step, and again, this is something that people just don't get. You can tell them 300 times they're not gonna do it right. And you see them struggling with their tripod with a lens on it. To keep your life simple, you lengthen from the bottom. Lengthen from the bottom. So we lengthen from the bottom. We lengthen from the bottom. We lengthen from the bottom. Now we lengthen from the bottom again. The next joint comes out. We lengthen from the bottom. We lengthen from the bottom. Now we got two out of three out. Now for me doing most photography standing, I'm gonna be about here. Now I will pull this leg in straight and I will let the last one down till it hits the ground so it's exactly the same length. And then I'll do the same thing here. And now we have all three legs lengthened. I should have mentioned that this fancy little rubber cap thing on the top, guess goes you know where. 
you do want to make sure when you first take this thing out of the box that this clamp to keep the tripod platform firmly seated is one of those dingle wops where you can loosen that thing. Oh boy, that was loose. When we send these out, I have Jim check these. So you, you push it down real hard and you're good there. And now we are going to actually tuck that out of the way, pulling it out, relocating it. Now we're going to put our FlexRooter Pro on top. The black lever is locked. And we are going to do this. And conveniently, the black lever is right in the, in the back. I loosen it, I center the bubble, and we're good to go. Now I take this, spin it around so the Arca Swiss clamp is on the right, and the silver knob is on the left. We're not going to put a lens on for now. So we photographed, we're working all day, and now it's time to pack the tripod up. So remember, we lengthened from the bottom, now we are going to rocket science shorten from the top. So we're going to shorten it from the top, shorten it from the top, one more half turn, shorten it from the top. Next section, next section, next section, and perhaps. I want to sit behind my tripod. I might pull this out, pull this out to the next leg tab stop, tuck my belt back in, don't look like a slob, pull this out to the leg stop, and that's a nice height for seated. Uh, but now we're packed up, ready to go home. Again, we want to. When we're shortening it, do the last section, last, the lower section, need a new belt. Remember, one, one knuckle's worth, one fist's worth, out on the bottom all the time, even when you pack up. So you might go, well, that's silly. It takes more room if you leave one of the sections out three inches or four inches. The problem is, if you do get a tiny bit of grit in one of these collars, the locking collars, this thing can seize up. And I've had times where I used to pack it all the way in, insert it all the way in, and I had to loosen it and then use my teeth to yank it out. So get in the habit of doing that. Make it longer from the bottom. Make it taller. I'm sorry, make it taller from the bottom. Shorten from the top, get your Enduro. We're just about out of stock. We need to reorder from Hungry. I hope everybody's safe in these times and stay home. This thing is deadly, deadly serious. Thank you much. And if you have any questions, you can always email Sam and Maya's grandpa or leave a comment on YouTube or on the blog post. Love you much. Cheers.